and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I'm in my new digs, and it's not quite finished yet, but I'm thinking that maybe you can watch the progression as I shoot YouTube episodes in this new studio that I have. You will see things improve. I'm starting to paint. You see all this stuff back here. It will get better. But, for now, I need to get shooting episodes again. I've been off the air for a while. Last episode I did was with my, uh, with, um, Marilisa Allegrini in Fumani, Italy. That was a really cool episode. But now, I've moved since I got back. I've had two wine tastings, big events that I do that once since I came back, and I got the flu really bad. Not making excuses, but that's why I haven't been out there. So we're going to do a canned wine blitz. Now, I'm changing some things up. I had a nice discussion with some of the ladies in London. Uh, Meg, thank you very much for the, uh, some of the advice. Getting rid of the spit bucket. I'm going to go a little bit quicker on the analyzation of the wines because I think sometimes I get really kind of geeky about it, which some of you like. I know that. I know some of you like it. But um, for those of you that want to watch these, you don't always want to see so much detail. I'm still going to grade the wines, but we're going to get started on these canned wines. Canned wines category is huge. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. In fact, um, I have one sales rep, uh, Lauren, who laughs every time a new canned wine comes out. I guess Eric Asimov did a, uh, from, the, uh, from New York did a uh, rundown on canned wines. He's kind of rough on them. And then one of, I did a, can, a couple of canned wine episodes in the past, and one of my viewers thought I was too easy on them. So anyway, we're going to get started right off the bat. We're going to do the house wine Sauvignon Blanc. It, all the house wines, I've got a little cheat sheet here because I can't write on the cans, obviously, are $5.69 a can. So let's see what we get here with the Sauvignon Blanc from House Wine. Now, uh, the cool thing about uh, the canned wines is uh, you can pop them and drink them because that's what they're made for. So let's give it a try. Um, it's okay. It's not great. I've had a little far better Sauvignon Blancs than this. But you know it's not terrible? I think you're in a little clam lake on the beach. I hope this lighting's okay. It seems like my, I'm a little bit too light in the screen. I can't tell. Anyway, um, you know if you're doing clams on the beach, you know, just sitting there sipping Sauvignon Blanc, I think it'll be okay. I'm going to go C+. Plus. Let's move on. Yeah, uh, this is House Wine Brute Bubbles, right there, five sixty nine a can. Yeah, the Sauvignon Blanc not terrible. So pop and pound. A little diesel component coming through. Some of you guys aren't gonna like this because it has that kind of diesel thing going on, which is. You know, a little bit weird. Uh, not much bubbles, not hardly any bubbles actually. Um, not, not terrible. It's carbonated, bubbly, crisp, vibrant, it says, and it runs in at 12% alcohol, so light alcohol. You know, you're not going to be offended by it, but it, I also don't think it's that great either. Uh, so I'm going to go C minus. Let's do the um, house wine rosé. You know, I got, I'm jumping all over here because I'm, I've got a bunch of Chardonnay here. So this is the house wine rosé, and it rolls in at five sixty nine. They're all the same price. So a little reminder. Get a touch of strawberry, a little bit of cherry. Once again, these aren't like terrible. And I mean, when I mean say terrible, I mean some of you know, it's not crappy wine. It's not great wine either. I'm going to go C minus on that as well. Get a little bit of that strawberry, a little bit of cherry. Um, it tastes like rose. It's not sweet. It's not dry. It's right in the middle. I'm going to go C minus. Let's go house wine rose bubbles. Oh, this lighting might be a little bit. Suspect. We will find out. I'm going to try to put it in. Now 
Now, interesting, I get a little pine, a little, uh, mm, mm. not supposed to spill it on yourself. Once again, not terrible. I get a little strawberry, not very many bubbles, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Asimov was really tough on these house wines, and I don't think they're, you know, what I'm looking for is funky. You know, if you get funky, funky is not good. I'm going to turn the other light back on. So funky is not, you don't want it funky, you don't want it to taste bad. This doesn't taste bad, it's just not great. So I'm going to go C on that, C, C minus, C minus. C. I'm going to go straight up C. Average, not bad, not funky. Yeah, not a, not a bad start on these house wines. Now let's move on to the Underwood uh, Wild Fan Oregon White Wine. So this is just a white blend wine. And this is 13.5 alcohol. I've also been having a real difficult time with my glasses. I've been seeing double. Some of the uh, my optometrists put a prism in my glasses, and it's been messing with my sight, which is very difficult. So this is the Underwood. Underwood goes for oh, these are six ninety nine. That's a weird tasting one. Yeah, I can't tell with that lighting how bad. We'll find out when I put put it on the uh, when I start on the editing. You know what? This is just really not a great wine. It has some funky flavors to it. I'm not sure what it is. It is dry. Um, I get like a pine needle component, a little bit of a grapefruit pith, some sweetness that comes through on the back end. Yeah, that one's, it's not, once again, not terrible. I don't want to be too rough on these, but that's definitely D plus, C minus. Yeah, it's too funky for me. Okay, let's move on to the La Bourmousse Blanche Vermentino from Bonny Dune, 2017, Fizzy White of the Earth. This rolls in at $6.99. So a project by... Uh, Randall Graham, and who knows if he's going to keep doing it. He start, He had this really cool wine, I think I reviewed it on YouTube, called a proper claret and a proper white, whatever. And he quit making them. What a goofball. Vermentino in a can. Interesting. Only, I would think only Randall Graham would probably venture in those areas. Um, you know, it, it, this is an interesting wine. It's got good balance. Um, it's dry. It's hard to pinpoint a flavor profile on it. It's, it is earthy. It is, has an earthiness to it. Almost get a mushroom component coming through, which I find quite intriguing. A little bit of an apple. Mushroom. Earth. This is one of the, this is this is be fun. This is a can wine that you could think about. You know, you're sitting around the campfire and some of you are like a little bit of wine geeky and you're like, wow, Vermentino in a can. $6.99, not a bad price. Um, interesting wine. You get that mushroom thing going on. God, it looks so white in this. I hope it just this doesn't turn out to be like I'm gonna turn La Boule Mousse Vermentino in a can blanche, $6.99 from Red Run. Not bad. I'm going to go B, B plus on that. That's a, that's a doer. That's a keeper. All right. Okay. Let's see what we got. I think we got some. Oh, yeah. We got a, uh, a Milbrandt Rosé. Now, I may have reviewed this. This is a smaller can. Uh, it's $4.29 um, as a single can. So this is their Rosé from Milbrandt. I got to have the light on. I can't see a thing. Yes, this is going to be a funny episode. Blitz in the can wines and can't figure out the lighting. Now, 
I'm gonna go D on that. That's there's no flavor. Sorry, I think I remember this. I mean, this is about as bland as you can get. Very back end might get a little bit of strawberry, but yeah, nothing, nothing. I'm gonna go D on that. Don't you now 4.29 for a little can like that. It's just ridiculous. Sorry to say. So now we're on to uh, Chardonnay. Let's do a, a group of Chardonnay here. Cascadian Outfitters Estate Chardonnay. This rolls in at 6.99. Well, I think this is 5 5.99. Excuse me. There you go. Meg, I don't know that this no spit, spit bucket thing is a good idea. Chardonnay is 13.7 uh, alcohol. You know, it's not bad. Um, I tasted this in the past. I didn't like it, but this is okay. Now, you know, when you're buying canned wines, where is your expectation? Really, is it up there? Is it down here? Is it down there? I mean, where are you at, really? That, that has a lot to do with how you feel about the wine. Do you expect canned wines to be top quality? I mean, really, think about it. Um, this is good. I mean, it's okay Chardonnay. It's not fantastic, but I'm gonna go C plus. I like it. Let's move on. Let's try the Mill Brandt Chardonnay. Hopefully, it beats its uh, counterpart. Now remember, this was uh, $4.29 for this little can right here. Probably 500 mil. I'm not gonna look because I waste some time trying to find those someday. Come on, Butch. Put some decent juice in your cans. I mean, this is like, it's so boring. It's like, pff, nothing there. Yeah. D. Let's move on. Okay. Here we go, Lauren. Doing the Murph. Murph Chardonnay. Murph runs in at $4.99. So it's a little bit more than the Millbrandt. Same 500 mil can. 2017. Chardonnay, Columbia Valley. Yeah, I should probably read some of that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So Murph is a, a, a division of Chateau St. Michel. I do know that. So I'm just looking at... Man, I'm making a mess. That's okay. The bar's back, by the way. Wow. Fakey, oaky, yucky, nasty, like oak dust. I mean, literally oak dust, powder, pouches, chips, whatever they're using. It's pretty obvious. Now, for those of you that like a little bit of buttery, oaky thing, and you're probably, probably going to like this. I personally find it offensive, a little bit nasty. Cool little can though, you gotta admit. There you go, Murph. Um, yeah, um, I, I just don't like that kind of fakey, oaky thing, you know? I mean, I know it's in a can of wine, like I said, where are your expectations? I'm gonna go C minus on that. Let's move on. House wine, Chardonnay. Now, interesting, uh, whereas Milbrandt had nothing really Murph had too much. I'm going to go, I, I think this might be good. These two might be the best so far. I mean, you know, this has a little bit of kind of an oaky, a uh, little bit of flavor to it. Not great. In fact, right behind this was even worse. I'm going to go C minus C on the house wine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm actually disappointed in uh, Millbrandt in their wines. 2016 Murph Cabernet Sauvignon. So we have the first red, first and only red. Now there was a chilled. Um, a uh, little Grenache from uh, Randall Graham I should have had here, but I didn't. Sorry about that, guys. 
We're going to do a second canned wine blitz, but these will be like spritzers. But I will include the, uh, the uh, fizzy Grenache in that. Because now these, this big thing now is these uh, white, these wine spritzers. So I got a ton of those. They're all sitting up there, ready, lined up to get chilled down for the next episode. But this is the Murph Cabernet, um, $4.99. I just am um, curious about the 14.5 alcohol, 250 ml. So these are 250 ml. Sorry, not 500. Duh, 250. They can't be 500 because these are 375s. Yeah, 250 ml. Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, I'm a little rusty. I haven't done these for a little bit. So Murph Cab, you know, it's, it's just a nerd thing in me. I have to smell it. So a little bit on the fruit forward side. I get a little bit of that kind of marshmallow current thing going on. Um, very ripe currants. Now I will say about this cap, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, a lot of people are going to like this. Little Murph cap. It's fruit forward, soft tannins, easy to drink. If you're around a campfire and you wanted a cab and you're eating a steak or eating a hamburger or whatever you're eating, you're going to like this. Even be good with chili, all of that. I'm going to be fair with this Murph wine because I've kind of bashed Murph before, and I want to. I'm feeling like I need to be kind to Murph right now. Uh, Craig Katz will probably appreciate that, and I'm not doing it for him. I'm not doing it for Lauren. I'm not doing it for anybody. But I just think as a, a just a sipping little canned cab, this isn't bad. So I'm going to go CC plus on it. Probably the next episode is a little bit more right on spot on. But you know it's been a, a hectic run with the moving and all that. And thank you for your patience. I'm going to start. Pumping out episodes on Tuesdays and Fridays. This will be up, up, up on Tuesday. I appreciate your viewership. I like it. I so appreciate your support a ton. A ton. I really do. That's what keeps me going. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Um, hook up with me on Twitter at, at StanTheWineMan. I do some tweeting. Instagram at StanTheWineMan. That's where I spend most of my time is on Instagram. But the cool thing is Instagram goes to Twitter, which is really awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make a comment about it if you want. It's up to you. Do you want me to do more episodes like this? How do you like the new format? Do you like it that I'm not spitting it out? Um, do you like the quickness of the episode? Let me know. Input matters. And once again, thanks to Meg for giving me some input on this. I really appreciate it. And thanks, Alan, for reminding me that I need to kind of look ahead on the labels so I'm not sitting there looking for the alcohol content and some other things on the labels. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.